My name is Carol Flavin and I'm a railway modeler and I have a layout at my house which is called the Edge Hay and Strines Railway. Oh, I'm Carol Flavin. Today I'm going to talk to you about things in a slightly different way than I have in the past because in the past I've focused on my videos on specific areas like the factory that I made or a harbour or a village. This time I'm going to talk about how I make water on my layout. Now I have a number of different aspects of water on it. There's a river. There is a rather marshy lake. There is a whitewater river running off the lake. I've also got a harbour. And all of those use the same technique but in slightly different ways. So I'm going to explain how I did those. I've also got some really quite spectacular waterfalls. And I'll also show you how I made them. Anyway, this is all about how I've been making water since. I, don't, I no longer pour water. I really don't want it all over the floors in my house. So I've done it in different ways. And I am actually going to explain how I've done that and showing you how to create very different techniques using the same way of doing things. So by, by the techniques, I say deep water, shallow water, white water, and I hope you'll find it useful. I'm going to talk to you about how I make water on my layout. I start off with toilet paper. I put a layer of Mod Podge down, put the toilet paper on it, another layer of Mod Podge on the top, which I then leave to dry. Once it's dry, I use that surface to put filler to create whatever height or additional things I need, like the edges of lakes, um, beaches, waves around the edge of the harbour, and I paint them. I then paint the depth. Now this is actually, as an artist, I find this quite actually very enjoyable. When I look for where I think the depth would be, the currents would be, I put the colours in, quite darks, muted colours. And then when I'm happy that they look pretty good, I will varnish it and start adding structure gel. I use Galleria structure gel and I use a, a paintbrush or a palette, depending on what I'm doing. Now, the paintbrush works extremely well in putting movement because as you paint it you can make the water run off say from as it is in this lake you can also then use it because it's a glue you can stick reeds and gravel and so on on with it once it's dry i do sometimes put more than one layer i then use heavy structure gel which is much thicker now in this particular case i'm using a paintbrush to paint in a small waterfall. Now bear in mind this looks white to start with, but when it dries, it's clear. I can then use the structure gel, heavy structure gel, to add additional currents, either with a paintbrush or with a palette knife. And these then give the feeling of height, depth and movement. And I do find this is extremely effective at creating those sorts of looks. But as I say, they, they look white, they dry clear. Uh, so I tend to finish the surface off with the odd little bit of white paint or dark paint. So this is the Whitewater River. This is the lake I showed you earlier with the finished water surface on it. So you can really see how much movement you can get just by putting the thicker heavy structure gel layer on it. I really enjoyed making this because the people around the lake are actually my family. They know who they are. And it's like a happy day out. This is another lake at the bottom of the mountains with people swimming in the water. And this is a river with lots and lots of surface water just rippling as it goes down towards the harbour. And this is the harbour with the deep water look, where I use the palette knife to create the look of waves. 
waterfalls, slightly different technique. I created this waterfall diorama to take out to model railway exhibitions, but when they got cancelled because of the epidemic, I only went to one, and that was the Doncaster one. I decided to use this on my layout, putting a mountain behind it and some, uh, sorry, a castle behind it and some mountains round it. I start off using silicon. Now this is crystal clear silicon. I use a silicon gun. Depends how thick you want it. In this case, I'm doing a fairly thin waterfall. So I put three rows and I use a palette knife to push them together. This is what it looks like when it's dry. And although it does look quite effective, I actually like to paint the movement in by using white paint, a small brush and painting chevrons down it. I then add a sort of spray or spume effect using some fleece. Um, this one happens to be a Christmas fleece, which you tease out the bits, pull some of the parts out, put a little bit more of the structure gel on it and lay the surface of the fleece on top. I like to make these and they're quite good fun and they do look extremely effective. I made a wider waterfall, some smaller ones and some very splashy lake or pond at the base of the waterfall and then when I added it to my layout it then runs off into a lake and a river. If you go to my YouTube channel and you want to know a bit more about how to make the waterfalls and that particular waterfall diorama, there are three short videos on how I actually did it. So I hope you enjoy looking at them. Now, I appreciate this is not the way lots of people do water. I find it's quite cheap and cheerful, largely because I have had only two tubs. One of the heavy structure gel, one of the structure gel. I got a bit of silicon. I used some toilet paper. I used my paints a lot and, a, and a, a spatula. And quite frankly, I've done all of what you've seen and more besides just using those. I've not had to replace any of them. So although it was a bit of a cost to start with, it was really cheap in the long run. And I'm actually really, really pleased with the effect. So I hope you find it useful. I hope you take away some ideas from this and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye. I'm not a professional, so I don't know how to actually put a link into these, but I do have some other videos on my YouTube channel about how I made various aspects of water, harbour, lake, whitewater river, lake at the bottom of a mountain, which you might enjoy watching as well.